Okay, um, yeah, let's thank Kami again. again. Um, so we definitely ran over, over time, which, you know, it's um, hopefully that was more worth it than just some code that I'll show on the screen. So I'm going to just very quickly um, go over the, the code tutorial, but it will be more of a take home. Um, you can go to the link and you can play with it on your own. Uh, but let's, let's go through it just so that you see how all of these ideas that we've learned about can actually be um, implemented in, in PyTorch um, and how simple it can really be. So we'll just use the last you know, 10 minutes to do that. I want to make sure we do end on time since I'm sure people have things to get to. Okay, so yeah, take a photo or uh, just type in this URL so that you'll have a chance to, to do this after if you would like to or feel free to open your laptop um, right now. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave that there for another 30 seconds. And just to comment, so PyTorch is a library for deep learning. Uh, it's probably the most popular library out there right now. It's my favorite. Um, in the research community, it's definitely the, the main one that people use. In uh, industry and products, there's a richer landscape um, of models and, and tools that are kind of optimized for production. But PyTorch is a great one to learn on and to do kind of research on, and it's very kind of academic. OK. So hopefully you got that. Um, here is, let's just shrink some stuff down. OK, so here is here's the very simple tutorial. I'll zoom in a little bit. OK, so the first thing that we're going to see, and I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'm going to sketch it out for you, and you'll have to run these in more detail on your own. The first thing we're going to see is how to use PyTorch. So uh, you can run it in any Python environment. And the simplest, most convenient one that I know of is Google Colab. So this is a free service via Google. Uh, you need a Google account, and you just go to colab.google.com. You know, um, you start, it's a new Python environment, it's an IPython environment, and you can just run things. It even has connectivity to um, GPUs if you, if you want, although you have to um, pay a little bit to get better GPUs. Okay, so then you need to um, get your PyTorch imported. So in, in Python, you know, you do import torch. Um, and then what Kaiming and I have said is that the main data structure for deep learning is the tensor, the multidimensional array. And if you're familiar with tools like NumPy, then you remember the ND array in NumPy. Well, the equivalent in PyTorch is the torch.tensor. So that is um, shown on this line. If I want to make a 2 by 2 tensor with data entries 1, 2, 3, 4, it will look like this. OK, so then. Um, Tensors have a, a number of different properties. They can be inspected using this little function here that I've written. So we have a, a and this is something that I find very useful just to put everywhere in code. Like you always want to be checking the data format of your tensors so you don't make errors with having the wrong types or the wrong numerical range. So I'm, I'm just constantly inspecting the tensors. And I think this is a good practice. What is the shape of the tensor? Is it like three by five by eight tensor? Is that what I expected? What's the numerical range? What is the average value? Sometimes you think that the tensor is representing an image in the range 0 to 1, but it was actually representing an image in the range 0 to 255, because um, images are commonly stored as 8-bit uh, numbers. So 255 is the highest value for uh, an 8-bit number. OK, so you'll see that all over the place. And once you have these tensors, you can do basic math on them. You can do addition, multiplication. Torch at MM is matrix multiplication. And remember that almost everything that we've seen is matrix multiplication. It's a special matrix for convolution. It's a special matrix for attention. But it's all matrix multiplication in the end. So um, Torch at MM is the basic you know, thing you want to use. It will be a very efficient implementation of matrix multiplication between two matrices or two. T so uh, if, if A is a tensor, it's a, two, uh, a tensor with two, two dimensions, then it's, it can also be called a matrix, and I can do matrix multiplication with those two tensors. Uh, well, you can do all of linear algebra uh, that you might want in the LinAlg um, module, so eigenvalue decomposition, other things that you, you might know from linear algebra. OK, so that's the basic 
kind of math you can do. So the next section of the tutorial um, shows you how to do learning. And the basic idea there is we, in Torch, uh, variables, tensors can have a special property called they are a, they're a variable. And when they're a variable, it means that you can optimize them and they have a special um, structure called a, a gradient associated with them. And the gradient is just what we saw with gradient descent. So when I want, if I define a, um, a tensor to be a variable, it's given this dot grad um, data structure, and that dot grad stores all the information necessary to do gradient descent. So it just means that that variable is going to keep track of what its gradient, what the local direction is that it needs to move to minimize the loss. Okay, so you see a way of constructing that in this section. And um, essentially, you just wrap your tensor in this variable structure. And whenever you work with PyTorch modules that are more complicated, like maybe of a convolutional network that you loaded, all of the parameters in that convolutional network will have been wrapped as variable objects, and they'll all have dot grad. And that's how PyTorch keeps track of um, the, uh, the gradients for all of your variables, which it's going to be using to automatically update the variables to minimize your loss. That's basically the main function that PyTorch provides, is the ability to do gradient descent. OK, so that, that part of the um, t tutorial will go over this. And there'll be one really important function, which uh, we've talked a little bit about, which is if I take a, um, an output of a neural network and call the method dot backward, it will go through that neural network and populate all of the dot grads of all the parameters in that network with the proper gradient um, that will locally be a step that updates the parameter to minimize whatever the loss function is. OK. So um, then finally, we can see how to define a learning problem. Um, and the basic idea of a learning loop is we loop for some number of steps. We compute the loss between a prediction. So f is going to be our network that outputs a prediction. We compute a loss. We compute the gradient for all of the parameters in the network by backpropping from the loss. And we then move the, the uh, parameters in the direction of the gradient of the parameters. So the parameters are labeled W here. And you can um, see that this is a very stereotyped learning loop that you'll encounter in all, kinds of, uh, in all kinds of deep learning settings. You always do this loop, gradient step, update parameters, loop, loop, loop. OK. So then the final section of this tutorial um, now says, well, let's make f into a neural net. In the previous sections, f was just a very, I think I defined f as being a very, very simple neural net. It's just a, a scalar times the data, just like one weight, right? But then we can define a net that is bigger. And what I wanted to point out here is there's two ways of doing this. One is you use a lot of pre-built libraries. You use Keras, you use um, Torch Vision, you, you download a ResNet. And that's fine. You can do that. That's a good way to get started. But if you really want to understand things, I think it's useful just to write in raw linear algebra. Don't use any modules other than torch.mm and like basic tensor math. And it's not actually much harder to do things that way than to use all of these uh, predefined models. So you might think, oh, a transformer, right? I have to load up a huge like thousand line library of transformer code. It's not true. You can write a transformer like a state-of-the-art transformer and you know, maybe a few dozen lines of just raw uh, matrix math. You don't need to um, use much beyond that. It's, it's, we're very close to the kind of the metal uh, in, in deep learning. It's, there's not a lot of abstractions that are um, necessary, at least for understanding how these things work and getting them to work well. Uh, yes, if you're at some big company, you have to use their whole production pipeline of distributing you know, to different nodes, and there might be a lot more software engineering on top. Uh, but this part of the tutorial just demonstrates how to do kind of uh, raw linear algebra definitions of a simple neural network, an NL MLP with two weight matrices. And this is all it is, just matrix multiply, add the bias, ReLU, matrix multiply, add the bias, ReLU, get a prediction, then put it in that learning loop and uh, fit it to some data. And there's an example of uh, fitting to a sine curve. So the red is the output of your neural network, and the blue is the sine curve you're trying to, to imitate. Uh, so that is just the sketch of uh, what you can go and play with uh, to get a better sense of what's going on here.